now the St. Kitts and Nevis Force Defense Force Band. Yes. Um, they fall on the Reserve Corps. Yes. Okay. They fall Could you elaborate a little bit in terms of? The, okay. The the band is they fall under the reserve because they're not most of the persons that are in the band are not regular members. They are mm -hmm. not active duty members of the force. They are reservists, pretty much. But they form they fall in another unit, which is the band. All they do is play music. That's all. Mm -hmm. They don't fix no vehicles. They don't plant no food. They don't cook no nothing. But they eat. <laughs> Okay. All they do is play music, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you know if you come here on a on a Monday and Tuesday, Wednesdays, you know, but you'll probably get to hear them a little bit more now as we get close to independence. Right. They do their rehearsals, their practices, and so forth. So they're there every day, play music. There's a band hall where they play. Mm -hmm. They have all their instruments and so forth. So they are you. They could be considered as part of the reserve, but they are also a separate unit from the reserve because I don't want to get you know how people get it mixed up that oh the band people are, are reservists no they are reservists in mm -hmm. their right yes but they are not reservists they are they are members of the band because the band is separate okay and then the reserve soldiers supplement the active duty the regular corps so you have the reserve corps which is the fighting force they supplement the regular fighting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. soldiers Okay, but they band, they play music. That's all they do. Right. So, the defense force band, mm -hmm. and they play a key role in terms of ceremonial activities. Yes. And so on. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And also in regimental uh, functions mm -hmm. within the force, because you know, the military moves with his band. And nobody's giving any commands. But soldiers will know what is being said mm -hmm. by different, you know, tones that come from the band. Right. What to do. Right. For example, if you look at um, when we have the uh, independence parade. Yes. First we start out. And that is coming up. It's coming up shortly. First we start out um, slow marching. You know, you go in slow marching and so on. Nobody gives the command. After you've gone to a certain point, the band goes... Boom, 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 and then you see them, they go into quick match. Everyone knows what they're to do. Everyone knows what to do. They so follow they, the band. They follow the band. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, in that regard, you don't necessarily have to uh, give this in because they, everybody knows what, you know, the different sounds. So the band is really the command, the different sounds are the, what right. gives the command. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like um, on a regular basis, I don't know if you've heard it. At Camp, uh, Camp Springfield, you hear the the horn go off for different things. Nobody's going to tell any soldier when to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to tell you when it is time to. Once you're trained, when it is time to um, do your regular cleanup right. on a daily basis. Nobody's going to tell you when it is time to eat on a daily basis. There are different tones, music. That place for that, you know, child time, mm -hmm. and when it is time to, um, you know, take down the flag. Mm -hmm. That is where you have the change of duties, which happens every every afternoon for us, as we have our duties set out. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, nobody's gonna go around. Hey, you know, you come here, you know, fall in and all that. No, this the bugle goes off. People know where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's a routine, so we just follow it. Right. Now, in terms of, for example, our young men, especially, mm -hmm. and, and young women too, um, discipline mm -hmm. and morale mm -hmm. and all of that sort of thing. You know, we have, you mentioned before, anti-social activities. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend mandatory service for young people to be in things like the Defense Force and so on? To help them with discipline, you know, um, building character, making good and prudent choices, um, service to country, patriotism, loyalty. You, you, you touch on it all, because all that is what the Cadet Corps stands for. 
the cadet core stands for teaching people enhancing self-respect discipline which is fundamental mm -hmm. time management leadership and all those other qualities uh, you know that you mentioned what we say is a key qualities in life to sustain life are being taught in the career core mm -hmm. and while they're learning that they're also having fun yes antisocial behavior is, is is a problem that we have in the society today um, and, and of course we can see the effects of it you know with all the, um, the shootings and the gang violence and all that uh, it's it's deeply rooted so uh, uh, yeah, I was part of a I was a person that was in charge of the cadet corps yes. for, for a number of years mm -hmm. and I've had interactions with a lot of young people okay about 15 years I was you know in charge of the cadet corps now we we tried different approaches to get across to parents because their children they cannot make a choice for themselves so it's required is required for the parents to make the choice for them and you know we try different approaches we tried open forum we go to parents teachers association meetings um, uh, we do school visits and you know just pep talk to try to advertise yes. the the, uh, the cadet program and being at school assemblies and right. all and unfortunately you know you see interests are developed but unfortunately they're not sustained because there's no encouragement from from home to be there there's no encouragement from the support element is not there so it's not enough for the child alone to follow through because you also have peer pressure now he might mean well and really interested because when you dress in uniform, like you know the cadet uniform, they have to dress properly. Yes. The pants cannot be below the waistline. It cannot be saggy. You have to be neat and all that. And I mean, you hear derogatory remarks being passed on to these young people and so on, and that kind of dissuades them from coming on. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a parent there that say, "Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, this is the way you're supposed to dress. In fact, this is how it is supposed to be, and so forth," then perhaps it will not fall on the on the wayside simple as dressing is tells a lot it about, communicates it communicates a lot it tells you the home where the child comes from and i mean in the, in the military in my military career you come across different quotes by different um, um important people that yes. have passed through there was one uh, significant one from a, a u.s army general and it says that um if you cannot tell a soldier to dress properly, to button up his shirt. How are you going to tell him to take a bullet? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just fundamental. It's not going to happen. So when you see a child who's not dressed properly and nobody's saying nothing about that, then everything else follows. Then you see them with earrings going to school. Then you see them with the pants below their waistline, showing all their boxes, and the yeah. shorts, and everything. And then everything falls out. Then they have, then they start to smoke in school. Then they have a knife, and then there's fights. And, and then everything else. So it is it is a, a, a product of everything combined that we are seeing today. They move from using knives, they move from throwing bottles to using guns. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that you know the, the the best way to deal with this problem is from the home. We have the the home has the parents. The parents have a, 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 an important part to play. Um, and let people leave politics out of it, honestly. Yes. Because I, I saw it; it was it was you know nasty. It was horrible. It was you know everything. What does po uh, po uh, politics have to do with the activities that a child is taking part in? I mean, I don't want to. I'm not politically inclined. I'm a professional, but you try to preach it to, yes. to these to parents and they don't follow through but then when it is already when it's too late then they want you to work magic and bring the child back no so if a child is you know takes an opportunity in the in the cadet corps yes 
they will learn discipline. They will learn all those qualities that you mentioned. Now, talking about the um, the national service, you'll be a good thing. I think it will be it will be very very good. The turnout is going to be good. What we have seen in the defense force, right, is there are a few bad eggs that come through. It doesn't matter. You're dealing with human beings. We are complicated. Mm -hmm. But the more people we have coming through the defense force, you know, who train, who serve, and then after a while they move on because they get better opportunities or what have you. But a lot of persons we have found come through this, the system and then they're not disciplined. They are. They develop. They they still have linkages with the antisocial group outside, uh -huh. and the defense force cannot condone that. So we, they have to they have to be dishonorable discharge. That is one case, but that is not doesn't have to be all the cases. You have persons who come through the system, who are well behaved, who take advantage of all the opportunities, who develop, and so on, and then they move on to other opportunities when they see. A better opportunity because everything is is, is all about money, mm -hmm. you know. When you think bottom line, mm -hmm. because a man has three, four kids, and he wants to be able to provide for them. Maybe he has a fifth one coming, and he sees a job that's going to be paying paying him probably a thousand dollars more than he's earning. He wants to go to it, and then you have that. So if people come through the system and they go out, and once they maintain their integrity and the discipline, it's better for the country. Mm -hmm. So, talking about um, uh, how do you deal with defense force officers who would have left the force? Do you think that somehow they have certain knowledge and so on about, do you think that they're a danger to the society? One. And secondly, how do you deal with people who want to enter the defense force because somehow they're attracted to guns? and they're attracted to power. Because I think that that is a serious issue. Mm -hmm. There are some persons, young people, who enter certain establishments and institutions because of that attraction, which can be a dangerous thing. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you categorically, no soldier is above the law. The law, we are we function, we operate within the ambit of the law. Okay? So, and all that is, you know, taught to recruits. And then we have, I, I brought here, we have what you call the St. Kitts and Vis Defense Force Act, Chapter 19.14, which is the, the, pretty much the law that governs the Defense Force. Yes. Now, if it's not here, it's not in this book, then you have the Queen's Regulation of the Army, which is the British uh, Manual. Right. And whatever is not here is in there. So if it's not here, then that takes effect. Mm -hmm. So it's there. So if uh, an individual comes in within the force, and you know, le let me just give you a general, just a you know, sum up. You are trained to function within the ambit of the law. But like I said again, you're dealing with human beings. People become, people are, human beings are complicated. Mm -hmm. The motive that somebody has wanting to come into the force, he might have it and hide it. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know. But while serving, while a serving member of the force, you are held accountable for your actions. You cannot, you are not above the law. People have this notion that once you're a soldier, it's easy for you to just, you just get a gun from all the camp and come and shoot people. Absolutely not. Accountability is at its highest yes. at Camp Springfield. I can testify to that. It has its highest. Mm -hmm. Soldiers cannot just willy-nilly just go and shoot people. No, it doesn't happen. It does not happen. Okay. Okay. So people must be rest assured that it can, it does not happen just so. However, if you are a serving member of the force and you are receiving threats from the society, from certain individuals within the society, because of your uh, profession, where you function, where you fall, you, you, you serve, support the police, and you go to search properties, or you have to search people, you have to conduct warrants, they, they support the police to 
to execute warrant or we're doing security operations in the hills and they approve marijuana as well and then an individual decides that he's going to try to vindicate a soldier for that we don't take that lightly mm -hmm. because we are not supposed to be scared of anyone to do our job as long as we do it within the ambit of the law right okay well we've had situations like that we don't take it light we stand by every soldier every soldier we will use everything that we have to defend a soldier once he's right once he's right if he's wrong this is there to deal with him and there are certain offenses that the defense force act cannot deal with we cooperate with the police i am sure that you heard of a case where uh, some soldiers were alleged to have had some sexual relationship with a minor mm -hmm. the case went to court mm -hmm. we supported it. we cooperated with the police the police did what they had to do the soldiers are in prison right now yeah and of course they have appealed their case we are not the determinant of their guilt yes let the law do that now you've touched on that point which i want to come to collaboration with the royal saint christopher and navy's police force mm -hmm. i know that the defense force collaborates with the police force what I want you to tell me in, in what consists your collaboration and in terms of where is the line of demarcation and what are the differences and the distinctions, for example, what you can do and what you can't do. Okay. Um, in the mission statement, I, one of the requirements is that the defense force aid civil authority. The civil authority here is a police force. Um, pretty much, we're not the front line. The police force say, hey, we need help, we support them, we help them. The defense force is not a police force. We don't arrest people. So you have no powers of arrest? There, let me, I'll clarify that. We don't arrest, generally, we don't arrest people. We work with the police, we detain people and hand them over to the police. If you see something happening, the police is going to announce to you that you're under arrest. Soldiers will not say you're under arrest. But you can detain or we can detain. If I see somebody, I going down the road and I see somebody trying to stab up or is stabbing somebody and I'm able to overpower him and put him on the ground, I'll detain him until the police comes and hand him over to the police. So shall I say, well, since I'm not a police officer, continue stabbing when you're done. No. So we got to we got to, you know, step in there and do what is proper. 